The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Get involved with Access Fort Wayne and make your own television programming. Call 421-1250 to find out more. TV, your host, me, co-host this evening, Jeff Landis. Why can't I not go anywhere without somebody bugging me, man? Okay, my special, I wouldn't really, well, he is special, but. Vinny, what are you doing here? You are the star, not me. My nose is so big I can knock somebody out with it. Really? Vinny, why you got to be like that? Oh, so, oh, you rule the show now. So you're, so you're taking over as Mr., you're kicking Mr. Sun off the show? Wesley, do you know he's kicking Mr. Sun off the show? Do you know that? Did you, why are you letting him on, man? It's either me or him. It's either me or him. All, all right, Vinny, I'm going to conduct this like a professional person. Okay? I'm not professional. A clown does a show better than I do? <sighs> You're lucky I can't be violent with you. But anyways, my guest this evening, not Vinny P. What's up, what's up, James? What's going on, Jeff? Sorry, sorry about that, man. You, you, you follow me. You, you know me for years, and this guy is like... He's annoying. something else. But how are you, by the way? Not bad. How you doing? Thanks for being on the show, man. Thanks for you coming on the show. All right. But uh, so we ended up uh, being Facebook friends. I don't know how mutual friends. I think. Um, and then I learned a lot of things about him. Not only is he a comic fan, but uh, he also likes to do skating, roller skating, not ice skating. So uh, tell me a little bit about your history on how you got addicted to doing roller skating. So probably back in the '90s, I started volunteering out at Roller Dome South. Got working out there. Was helping out there, got into DJing. I've been into music my entire life, DJed out there for a long time. And then that place shut down. So then I got out of her for a while and then I approached uh, Bell Skate and Rink in New Haven and uh, started kind of volunteering out there and doing some stuff out there. And I've been active with them now for about five years and that's just kind of my part-time thing I like to do. It, just my passion, music and roller skating. That's true, and you also go, you purchase roller skates from different places too. Tell us a little bit about the ones that you got and the ones that Yeah, so these here. particular ones sitting here, these boots are from back in the 1980s. This is a Rydell 595. These wheels here were custom uh, ordered from uh, Australia. There's two different gentlemen in Australia, a guy named Jeff Brown 
he puts the wheels together, and then there's a guy named Scott Corey that actually pours this uh, urethane, and these are very, very, very hard wheels to get your hands on. So if you could ever get your hands on these wheels, these are the best wheels in the world to skate on. Now, you said you, you obviously roller skate, and, and you also do the DJ at Bells. What's the weirdest place you roller skated at? Because, again, like I said, you have no limits when you roller skate because you can go anywhere. What's been the craziest place you roller skated at? Because I know we all have those crazy things. Mm. Probably, to be honest with you, and I didn't bring them to the show with me, but I've got a pair of gas powered roller skates. And over the summer, I had them one down at Promenade Park. And if it wouldn't have been for my daughter stopping me, I probably would have crashed and probably would have ended up in the hospital. What made you decide that you wanted to do that? Because again, like I said, nobody else is doing it. And what made you decide, hey, I want to do this? We just, it's just something that we wanted to do. I mean, my kids finally got into doing it. And so like on the Sundays, a lot of times we, uh, we just like to put our skates on Sundays, go down to the park and roll around the park. And one day I just decided that I was going to put these skates on and go downtown and try to make a fool of myself, and I almost did. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to, to, for your, your kids to make a butt out of yourself, just to have fun. But you know, like I said, you know, it's all about spending time and stuff like that. But you know, like I said, like, roller skate was back, very popular back then, but then it's slowly coming back. How, how do you feel about the evolution of that? Because everything that's coming back in the 80s and 90s is slowly yeah. coming back. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh, yeah, roller skating, it's, uh, it's coming back big time. Like, uh, I do a lot of stuff with Bells on the weekends, and man, I'm telling you what, the birthday parties on the weekends in the wintertime, that place is completely full of birthday parties. The kids love it. The parents that did it years ago, you know, they're getting their kids into it, their grandkids into it, and yeah, it, it's really coming back popular, and it's, it's good cardio. I mean, it's really good exercise for you, and it's pretty easy. It's not like riding a bike, though, so trust me, if you haven't put on a pair of skates in 20, 30 years, it's not like riding a bike. I, I can tell you that. I can't even ride a bike now. I can barely walk down the street without being in pain. So I wonder if I can ever hold, ever do, ever holding up doing roller skating. I, I don't know. I will see, man. What, Vinny? Well, he wants to talk to you about something. Uh-oh. What's that, Vinny? What do you want? He's actually talking to somebody else besides me. That's scary. What was he telling you? Oh, uh, man, he was saying something about... Uh, he really likes these skates, and he was saying somebody might have to put these skates on this weekend and uh, start trash talking Jeff here. I don't know. What do you think about that, Jeff? So, Vinny, you're going to be the one, not me? Okay. That's cool. I guess I don't have to roll. Really? You're challenging me to go roller skating. What if I don't? Then you're taking over the show? Ooh. This sounds interesting, Jeff. Vinny wants to know if it's okay with you, because the season finale is coming up with me and Vinny and Adoso Landis. He wants to know if it's okay with you if I could. He's challenging me to go skating, but he wants to know if I could do it over there. Absolutely. I, would, I think your fans would love it. I would love to see it. And, uh, yeah, I, I think, Vinny, that uh, keep this challenge with Jeff, because we'll see if Jeff accepts this challenge. It's on him. The ball's in Jeff's court now, NP. Should, should I do it? Should I do the roller skating? Uh, all right. All right. Last week, oh, so you called me a, a chicken because I didn't do it last week. I was faking my, I was not faking my, my chest pains. Oh. See, now he's calling me, Wesley, he's calling me names. You don't allow him to do that? All right, punk. Not you, Wesley. <laughs> You punk right here, Vinny. I accept your challenge. I got a challenge for you. Well, I already told you what the, at the beginning of the show what you can do. We can't say it on the show because it's, it's something else. But, all right, you heard it first. I'm going to be doing skating at Bells. Um, you got pillows for <laughs> We got pillows. We got skate helpers. We got everything, man. So there's no, there's no excuses, Jeff. You got to accept this challenge, man. I'll do it for you guys out there. Not for him, but for you guys. You know, the love for the entertainment business, I love it. Okay. All right, can we get back to the guest? This isn't about me, this is about our guest. Somebody wants to know is, uh, like, what? how often do you do stuff for, for Bells? Well, I, uh, sometimes um, I'll DJ school parties during the week. Lately I haven't been doing that. Somebody else has been doing that, but I usually... Sometimes I'll DJ our family nights on Friday nights, uh, and then usually on the weekends we're open, but a lot of times it's for um, 
a lot of, it's all public sessions on the weekends, but it's uh, mostly a lot of birthday parties and stuff. And then I'll do some private parties for them. And sometimes we'll do adult nights, like over the weekend. I did an adult skate. We skated probably close to 50 people. It was really nice. We're planning on doing one again next month and see what happens. You know, maybe we can get you to come out there if you can uh, put the skates on and not fall with the Vinny P challenge. But we'll see how that goes. Let me see what I can do. I can't promise you, but I'll try to do my best as a skater. Again, like I said, I, I, I got to sign a contract with Vinnie P because Vinnie P says if I don't do it, then why do I got to do pressure? Man? Peer pressure's a pain. He's putting the pressure on you because you got 30, you're going to be on your 30 years, and he's putting the ice on you. Yeah, I'll probably be falling on ice. I'll probably need a whole body full of ice after I get done doing this. So uh, not only was skating, but you're also a comic fan. What made you want to... Uh... Man, my mom got me into the comic games back when I was probably about 10 years old, man. I've been following the comics since about 1982, 83, and it's just something now that I got my kids involved in. And, I mean, we, we're diehards. We go all the time. Win or lose, we're there all every hockey game. Well, one thing I got to give, give credit for you for is, man, you're, you're around my – you're a little bit older than I am, but around our age, man, you don't even act like your age. You – like you got like 20 years behind you. Right, yeah, everybody says the same thing, man. I go seven days a week, nonstop. I got two different jobs I do. I'm at the hockey games. I mean, I'm all over the place. I mean, I guess you're only as old as how you feel. I mean, that's the way I look at it. I mean, now you're starting an adventure with the entertainment business. I mean, heck, we got your daughter doing the um, the training last week, and she did one heck of a job, and now you got your... I got my son up running the camera, right? I mean, you never know. Maybe... That'll be our next big thing. We'll be the next big YouTube family in Fort Wayne. They'll be taking, they'll be taking over the, uh, the whole entertainment factor of uh, entertainment. What? Right. They'll be knocking me off my boots of entertainment, which is fine with me because I need my break. But anyways, like I said, man, it, it's cool you're, you know, you're growing a different venture. Now you're in, doing TV. And since, you know, we're going to bring this up too, you also have a distant cousin that we were talking about, Disco Harry. Yeah, a lot of people... A lot of people might not remember him if you haven't been around town for a long time. When I was a younger kid, my family wouldn't talk a lot about him because he was so strange for his time. But he, he was definitely a strange guy, but boy, that guy could dance. I kind of see that you got like a personality from him, too, just the way it is. Uh, I know you want to do like a flashback show, and, and just to let you know today on the Dose, our Wesley TV, sorry, Wesley. Yeah, I know you don't use for the anyway, but. On Wesley TV, what we're going to do, since you're doing the whole thing with Bells, helping us out as well, we're going to help you out. We're going to do a special Fort Wayne flashback of Disco Harry for you. That would be awesome, man. Heck yeah, because uh, a lot of people a lot of people don't remember him. If anybody's going to have any pictures or anything, maybe they could send to Jeff. That would be awesome, because I know there's got to be some stuff around town that maybe I haven't seen that's around. It's got to be. So we will be adding that on to this latest Fort Wayne flashback for you. That was awesome. Uh, again, James is a, is a good guy. He's been a class act. Talked to him numbers of times, and we got to talking, and he's also linked up with Kevin. Uh, Kevin, you're looking about Kevin Ferguson. Yep, Kevin's a great guy with Positive New Haven. Yeah, uh, like I said, we, we all get linked up to each other somehow. Uh, again, like I said, you know, it's, it's all about cross-promoting and networking and getting to know each other better. And, you know, like I said, man, you look like you're going to be taking over the whole world. For now, you taking over, took over skating, took over the comments. Now, you're taking over access. So, man, that's going to be a good story. New family empire. That's right. I can I, I let you know the entertainment business is definitely, it's, it's addiction. It's, but I have to say to Vinny P, uh, sorry, Vinny P, you're going to have to use some rental skates because I can't let you use my whips, man. You just can't use my whips. Ah, uh, so, so you have to go skating too, Vinny. So is that okay if he goes skating? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. If he's going to challenge you, then Vinny P's got to show us what he's got. What are you saying, Vinny? You got a secret for me on Saturday? Oh, I got to wear something strange. Man, why can't he just leave me alone? Wesley, can you fire this guy right here? Oh, and Vinny, to even make it better for you, I'll wear my referee shirt and my whistle so we can even make this fair game. So James will be the judge. James is going to be the judge of us. Okay, nice, nice. nice so there's going to be no cheating, no hiding anything or anything. This is going to be all out. No holes barred. 
And since you are going to be the referee, you're going to choose. Who do you want to go skating first, me or Vinny? I think we should have Vinny P go first since he's talking all the trash. All right, you hear it first. You hear it, Wesley? You hear it? Vinny P, you're going first. You're going first, Vinny P. You're going first. I got some plans for this guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, the roller skating is going to be awesome. I haven't done it forever. Um, anything you want to change about, you know, with, with bells? Like, any, if you have any ideas for any. I mean, I know you're doing the old school thing. Do you have any ideas for any more events that you have in your head that you want to uh, I mean, we, uh, there's going to be, we're going to be getting back to it where we do on Wednesday nights. We do, that's been very successful. We try to kind of help out. People in the community maybe that don't have a lot of extra money to take their families out to do stuff, so we do some. But right now we've been booking a lot of school parties, but I think more, you know, maybe next month, a month after, we're going to be doing some to kind of help out people and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, it's – we got some other things going, some theme family nights and stuff that we've been doing in the past. We're going to try to do some new stuff this year with. We did a Harry Potter night one night last year and was real successful. So you just follow our Facebook page or uh, – and just – Keep your eyes out and for uh, stuff to come at a later date. I've got an idea. I mean, again, like I said, what about a 90s night? And we did it. We did an 80s night a while back ago, and it it turned out pretty good. But that's what I was thinking. Maybe do like a 90s or something. Yeah, definitely. Do you like a Fort Wayne retro night where you bring like the old Fort Wayne Wizards stuff or Fort Wayne Fury type of stuff? Yeah, that'd be something good. I never thought of that. Heck yeah, like yeah, like a rewind Fort Wayne night. I mean, yeah, and then you also got some of the local talent who's also. That's another good idea, too, to have, like, local talent play when you do the DJ and have, have local talent come in and perform. And, yeah, I mean, that's just an No, yeah, that'd be cool. something good because, like, uh, Bells, that's the oldest skating rink in Indiana, 2026, it'll be 100 years old, and there was just something on social media the other day that Arch did, and before they actually started playing music, they had a pipe organ in there that they used, and that's what they used to, uh, that's what they used to use to play the music for the roller skater and pipe organ. There was a dance an open, a, uh, open ceiling dance club with a dirt floor before it was a skating rink. Nice. So uh, Bells has got a lot, of, a lot of stuff to it. It's slowly making another big comeback again. Like I say since COVID pretty much kicked everybody in the, in the, in the butt, and like I said everything's starting to expand again. Again, go out to Bells, man. I mean, you got him and I and that, but, you know, just like I said, that's one place I've never filmed. Because you remember the first time first time I talked to you, I was like, yeah. man, you know one place I've never filmed is Bells. Yeah, well, that's going to happen. We can't we can't say when and what day or what time, but it's going to happen real soon. Yeah, I, again, like I said, I remember there going there as a kid. And, I mean, I don't remember if I roller skated good or not. So. Well, the Dunlops are good people, man. They're very, very nice people. Yeah. They've, uh, they've blessed me and my family well over the last five years. Yeah, you, it's it's rare you get to find a class act of people like that who stick around and been doing, you know, roller skating forever. Like I said, it's, it's making a comeback. I mean, like I said, you know, 90s and 80s and everything's making a comeback. I mean, if you go on social media, you see everything. Like, I, 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 get, I get on reels and stuff like that. You see, hey, you remember the skating days? Do you remember going to the IHOPs, the, you know what I mean, like the sock hops type of deal? Oh, yeah. And, and the like, outdoor skating thing is getting uh, pretty big. They did a couple... Last summer down at, uh, oh, down the street, with Columbia Street West is the landing. They did an outdoor yeah. skate thing there. And there's a lot of celebrities that are doing it, like Shaquille O'Neal's big into roller skating. And then they just opened up a outdoor skating rink at Rockefeller, New York. Wow, and outside? Was, uh, yeah, outside where the ice rink was. And then I can't think of what famous, I think it's Usher. Usher had something to do with it. And Usher's big into roller skating, too. Wow. So, like I said, it's making a comeback. And again, like I said, you know, nothing... Retro ever dies. It always makes a comeback. No, ma makes no, a comeback. no matter what, no matter 50s, 60s, 70s, it always makes a comeback. And Vinny P is probably going to make it even come back even more after this weekend. Oh, man. I can't believe I'm still challenging me to do this. It's all right, man. We got this. But uh, we're about to go. Anything you say to the fans before we go? Well, just uh, let's see what happens, man. Hopefully, uh, we uh, Jeff doesn't break a leg or anything when we do this mini P challenge. But hey, Jeff's gonna stand up, be the man that he is, and uh, he's gonna accept the challenge. And we'll uh, have to follow up on it after this happens and see what happens. It's gonna be on the season finale of a dose. Oh my God, it's gonna be crazy. But uh, thank you for watching What's the TV. My uh, guest is James. And again, we're going to Super Mario World. We can take one step and dun 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 dun. dun.
Hey, what's up? This is me, Vinny, Vinny, Vinny P. How are you guys doing out there? Good, good. How are you? How are you doing? Well, it's not so sunny in this place. <laughs> it's not so sunny in this place anymore, is it? No, no. Whatever happened to Mr. Sun? Yeah, what's going on? Well, Mr. Sun on? just broke some wind, so he's far away. Oh, okay. I'm taking over the show. This is Vinny P. Hi, and Vinny. I'm doing some crazy skits on some of the different shows, but now I'm taking over Wesley TV. All right, Vinny. Contracts, man. Read the words first. Okay. So, hey, Wesley Squad. Today we'll be going on another adventure here on Wesley TV. Today we'll be learning about the Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. World of Universal Studios. All right. Um, well, Super Nintendo World takes you into the world of Super Mario Battle Team Bowser on the groundbreaking Mario Kart ride. And you can dine at Toadstool Cafe level with themed merch. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that, Rose. And the Super Mario World at Universal Studios Hollywood will open on Friday, February 17th, 2023. Oh, wow. At Super Mario World, the food is as fun as the play. Plus, you'll find an incredible assortment of toys and apparel you can take um, a piece of the adventure home with you. Wow, I like that idea. Yes. That's pretty cool. So you got something to remember it by. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I like that. In mm -hmm. some of the parts of the Super Nintendo world we will be visiting is Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge, Toadstool Cafe, 1-Up Factory, Super Nintendo World Store on City Walk, Character Shop, and Feature Presentation Store. We will also explore other parts of Universal Studios Hollywood when we are here, here is a PSA about Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood. Is that okay? Here we go. And stay tuned for more on Wesley's TV. Stay tuned for more on Wesley TV. TV. Good, good, good. Good. How you doing, Benny P? Not too bad. Now, don't don't give me ideas of what to eat because I'm, I'm fresh and, I, and I'm cooling. Okay, I'll keep you right here. So. so today we are going to to a cart browser challenge. Hmm. So Wesley, okay. Wesley Squad, welcome back to our show today. I'm next we're talking about the Mario Kart. Uh, Bowser Challenge. Okay. Are you ready, ready to challenge? Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready to experience Mario Kart like never before? Put on us your special goggles and battle Team Bowser on ironic Mario Kart um, courses alongside Mario Lugi and Princess Peach. Collect the coins and throw shells to within um, win the golden cup in the groundbreaking ride with cutting edge technology as Super Mario World. Bowser's Castle awaits in the Mario Kart Browser's Challenge queue. You will tour Browser's iconic castle, pass through the hall of medallions and trophies to the prized golden cup, and get an eye on his plan to defeat Team Mario 
as you prepare to face off on the track. Hmm. The height requirements is 40 inches, with people under 48 inches required supervision companion. The ride is a 3D and 4D ride. You can child swap and single rider is available. So please stay tuned for more on Wesley TV. Hey there, yeah. man. You doing good? How about you? Not too bad, man. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying this this ride that we've been going on to. <coughs> and let me tell you, I'm getting hungry, and I want to go shopping, 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 shopping. Today on Wesley's TV, we will go back to our show. Today, we are going to talk about dining and shopping outside of Nintendo World, including Nintendo World Store, uh, City Walk, Character Shop, and our feature presentation store. Bam. Bam. Feature presentation. Yeah, our first stop is Super Nintendo World Store on CityWalk. Nintendo fans can now stock up on all things Super Nintendo World at the dedicated Super Nintendo World Store on CityWalk. This fully themed store. Located outside the gates of Universal Studios, Hollywood will be accessible to all fans. Bowser, a uh, wide selection of exclusive merch, and level up your fandom. Did you know that? No. The next stop is the character shop. Head to the character shop on Universal Studios Hollywood lower lot for exclusive Super, Mar Super Nintendo World merchandise. Stock up on collectibles, apparel, and more. Our next stop uh, is Featured Presentation Store. Get ready for Super Nintendo World opens this uh, February 17th of 2023 in Universal Studios, Hollywood. And level up with all kinds of exclusive apparel and collectibles at the Featured Presentation Store currently open in the park. Our next stop is Toadstool Cafe. You're not imagining things. Inside the Toad House is Toadstool Cafe. Step in to indulge in fun, tasty dishes crafted by Chef Toad and enjoy the playful scenery of the Mushroom Kingdom from the windows. Wow, I like that. Definitely. Our next stop is One Up Factory where you will find the perfect survivor at the One Up Factory store. Th this super fun store is where you can find all sorts of items from Mushroom Kingdom, Bowser, Survivors, and wearable merch to level up your experience at Super Nintendo World. Oh, wow. That's pretty nice. Yeah, like the Super Nintendo World in Japan, they will have power up bands. Use your band to keep score through the land. As you take on key challenges, collect digital coins and more. Oh, wow. With the Power Up Band, you'll experience a new way to play. Please stay tuned for more. Warm wishes from all of us at Parkview Health for a happy, healthy holiday season.
Mr. Gordon Pineapple. Yep. I taste so good. Pineapple. Right, right here. Pineapple. Right here. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> hey, leave my hair alone, man. It's All fucked right. up. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. There I we go. Hair, I got my hair uh, let's as spike as it up as some more here. I got my hair done as a, <laughs> I got my hair done as a local sponsor called uh, okay. Mario Curls. Mario. Mario Curls. Okay, Mario cool. Mario Curls. Yes. Cool. Nice. Here in Japan. When we, when we when I when I went back to my dressing room before before the segment, uh huh. I got my my uh my, my Mario my Mario deal. <laughs> but anyways, Mario deal. today we are here to have fun. Our next stop is the Universal Hollywood. Today is our Transformers and Transformers. Da 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 da. da. It's a Transformers now. Anyway, this is a three D Transformers. This is a ride, which is three D. It's a next generation thrill, boring between lines and fiction and re 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 reality. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Woo! Right. Woo! The All right. Fusing 3D and HD media and flight. I think that looked familiar. All right. Pretty cool. All right. Fusing 3D, HD media and flight simulation technology. This epic ride creates an experience unlike anything this planet has ever seen. Based on the popular movie franchise, this mind-blowing Transformers adventure puts you in the middle of the ultimate war zone. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that, Rose. A flight alongside Optimus Prime and trying to survive as you protect the All All's Park from Decepticons over the four stories of tall building. Remember, the future of the human race is counting on you. Um, prepare for the greatest battle you have ever read. My favorite all-time movie. Yeah, it is. Can you count them all? In addition to Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and Megatron, there are 13 other Autobots and Decepticons featuring through the ride. Did you know that? <laughs> and welcome to the nest. The military installation you will enter for the attraction is part of the nest, which stands for Non-Biological Extraterrestrial Species Treaty. <laughs> Stay tuned for more on Wesley TV. Well, the midnight headlights blind you on a rainy night Steep grade up a hill, slow me down, making no time But I gotta keep rolling The windshield wiper, slapping out of tempo Keeping perfect rhythm with the song on the radio But I gotta keep rolling How much? Hey, how you doing? That's why you guys like my hair so much, man. Oh, yeah. Stop touching my hair. <laughs> don't, don't, don't crank my style. <laughs> but today we are here on Wesley's TV 
Today on the show, we're going to be able to soar above the Hogwarts of Harry Potter. Potter, Potter, Potter. <laughs> cool. Located in the wizard, wizarding world of Harry Potter, enter through the towering cast, castle gates and make your way down the familiar passageways and corridors of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Visit iconic locations such as Dumbledore's office, the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, the Gryffindor common room, the Room of Requirement, and more. Then get ready to soar above the castle grounds as you join Harry Potter and his friends on an unforgettably thrilling adventure coming face to face with an array of magical creatures. This amazing attraction uses groundbreaking state-of-the-art technology and a little magic to create one-of-a-kind rides. Did you know that? No. In addition to Professor Snappy's throughout the Harry Potter stories, the post of defense against the dark Arts professor has been held by six different professors. Quirinus, Quirrell, Yolary, Lockhart, Remus, Lupin, Asphor, Mad-Eye, Moody, Dolores, Umbridge, and Amy Chris Caro. Hogwarts Castle is in a secret location in the north of Britain, it also has a number of enchantments on it and is bewitched so that all the muggles see is an old ruin with the sign, danger, do not enter, unsafe. And please stay tuned on Wesley's TV. Prepare yourself for the evolution of Jurassic Park, the ride. Enter and immerse into the land and come face to face with the indignous Rex as he stalks you through the jungle. Get caught in the fray as she confirmed by her archival, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, in an epic battle for the ages. You're on a tour of Jurassic World a relaxing and exciting boat ride to see life-sized dinosaurs. You start by entering the underworld exhibit for the jaw-dropping Moscaris during feeding time. You know apex um, predators of the deep. The tour continues with another tearjerker as they announce the new baby Stagosaurus being welcomed to the park after dodging some geysers and surprise visits from a Parasaurus, it seems something has gone wrong. An alarm starts to sound and we see a crashed geysphere along the path with a few Compasaurus, as known as Compies, fighting over some clothes. Did you see that? No, that sounds dangerous to me, doesn't it? Yeah. You are now headed into Predator Cove, and it seems something is really not right. Okay. Claire Darling tells us to remain calm, and we continue making our way into Predator Cove and straight towards Tyrannosaurus Rex Kingdom. It seems um, that the indignous Rex has escaped her um, padlock and she, 
on the hunt for us. This can't be good. Uh-oh. Mm -mm. That don't sound good at all. You make your way up a ramp as Owen Grady tells you not to panic. You're greeted by some velociraptors causing trouble and a surprise visit from the Indominus Rex stalking your every move. A few Dilophosaurus split at spit at you. You see Blue trying to help you. All of a sudden, a larger than life battle breaks out between the Indominus Rex and the Tyrannosaurus Rex. As you watch the fight take place over your head, you suddenly plummet 84 feet down to the huge splash. Please stay tuned for more on Wesley's TV. Oh, wait a minute.
guys. Hey. Howdy, 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 howdy. Man, I'm enjoying the show so far. How about you guys? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Exclusive interviews. Now we're going on car ride, or trips. Now we're going on another trip on a ride. No. We're going to the trip to Universal Studios. Uh, Our next segment will be here on Wednesday, Tuesday. We'll be taking you to talk about fun facts about Universal Studios in Hollywood. <laughs> Universal Studios Hollywood started out as simply as the studio tour in 1964 giving guests a behind-the-scenes glimpse at movie and television production. But the studio's roots go all the way back to the silent film years. This movie studio was founded in 1915 and has always been in the same location, so it's one of the longest continuous movie studios in Hollywood. The opening date was March 15, 1915. Admission was only a quarter, and you got lunch for it, too. Yeah, in uh, 1964, USH uh, introduced the incarnation of the studio tour. The tour included a box lunch, and the vehicles used to transport guests were called Glamour Trans. Interestingly enough, the initial tour guys of the studio tour were folks Universal Studio Hollywood found working at the studio or relatives of famous people. One of the first tour guys was a guy named John Badham, who was famous for directing Saturday Night Fever and War Games. By 1991, the park finally had a ride apart from its studio tour, the E.T. Adventure, which no longer exists at Universal Studio Hollywood, but can be found at Universal Studios Florida. Did you know that? No. The next time you're out to stop into Transformers the Ride 3D, consider this a very famous TV family used to reside in the same building where Transformers is now originally. That was the old special effects show. Please stay tuned for more on Wesley TV. Dr. Kate Wyatt, as I'm getting used to, and I'm a first-year internal medicine resident here at Parkview. 
I'm actually originally from the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest, a little town called Yakima, Washington. I got lucky enough to get accepted to a medical school in my hometown. Medical school, you learn kind of like the base general knowledge. And now being in my residency, I'm just learning everything I wanted to learn. So across the nation, internal medicine residency is three years total. Typically what it's going to look like is you'll have residents, senior residents, and then attendings who are people that have completed their residency and they are specialists in their field. We'll do rounds together where we see patients. Ultimately, they're in charge of patient safety, making sure orders are in, and then our education, making sure that we're learning, putting in everything appropriately, and kind of progressing in our knowledge base. Parkview Internal Medicine Residency actually does what's called a four plus one, meaning we'll do four weeks of a rotation, like we'll do four weeks of wards. Wards is what we do most, especially during our first year of residency. And that's when the ER, the emergency department calls and says, we have a patient that's not safe enough to go home, they're sick enough to be admitted. We will go down and admit them and take care of them until they're safe to go home. And then every fifth week, no matter what rotation you did, you're in clinic. As a resident, it's just one-on-one, -on -one, me and the patient. We'll talk together, we come up with the plan, and then I'll go out, confirm with my attending, talk with the attending, and then either all of us or just me will go in and talk with the patient. And that for me is really special because then you really get to feel what it's like to be their doctor. We are all really happy to be here and we all are excited to learn. We are so grateful for our patients for allowing us to take care of them and then being a part of our educational journey. I have a great group of people around me that I enjoy being around that make going to work really fun. We have the support staff. We are supported. If we don't know something, go and find it. There's a person there that helps us. So just because we're learning doesn't mean you're not gonna get top quality care. So what happens after residency depends on what each internist or each third year resident decides they wanna do. Some of my co-residents want to continue on and subspecialize further, such as cardiology, GI, or pulmonology. And that's an extra three years, just about on top of internal medicine residency called a fellowship. Myself personally, I really like hospitalist medicine. And so I'll be able to practice that after my three years. Back up. Right. The more we get
together.